Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Back Nine coverage of the GK Pro Winter Series Finals. We are out here at one of our local courses here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, McClure Park. Um, it's actually our most popular course in For town sure. on UDisc or on a disc golf course review. Yeah, I mean, it's right so. in the middle of town. And it's a great design, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, one of the better park courses out there. Um, we've got our four winter series leaders in points battling out for 250 bucks in cash uh winner take all so far we got Ro justin robertson leading at three under par tommy agent is two strokes behind him at one under par richard y at even and then we got brandon cawthorn at two big getting straight into this back nine we are on hole 10 a new hole here for the uh, new mcclure layout it is a par three 291 feet this hole, um, you can either throw a riskier forehand over the walking path on the left side, or there is a big spike hyzer line or a um, kind of soft hyzer with the mid range as well. Um, you kind of have your pick here, and it's really just what whatever you're comfortable with. Or you have this. Yeah, this is what Justin's known for right here. And he's going to be about circle's edge, a yeah. little bit short and right, but yeah. I mean, that's still not bad. Hurt my shoulder just watching it, but here's Richard with that sky hyzer, which is, I'd say, the most popular play if you have the distance for it. Oh, yeah. And he's right there, just about pin high, 25, 30 feet. Tommy? This is kind of the route that I prefer. Just a similar line. Yeah, a little bit lower, but a little more direct. And, yeah, he's about 20, 25 out. Yeah, if you saw yours off at all, you really have a high risk of going OB over that sidewalk on the left side. Oh, yeah. And Brandon coming up way short. He was actually walking up to his desk, and he thought he was about 20 feet closer. Right. Justin for two. Yeah, I just didn't quite put enough on that one. Yeah. Here's Brandon from about just outside circle. Just a little low. Richard making the birdie though, moving to one under par. Definitely needed that one. Here's Tommy for his birdie as well. Gets it in there. He is now only one stroke back of Justin, sitting at two under par. Uh, do you think this back nine's easier or harder than that front? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's a little bit more difficult because you've got 17 and 18 plus 11 as well. So um, I think it I used mean, to be easier on the back, and now it's more difficult. Yeah. All right, hole 11, par 3. It is 404 feet. This is a very tricky hole. Um, as you can see, you have the creek all along the right side that plays out of bounds along with the right side of the creek. And then you have the walking path on the left side up the hill that plays out of bounds as well. Um, you're really just trying to get something straight down, carrying over the creek the entire way and uh, have it check up near the basket. The danger here is just uh, the angle you land at because if you catch edge on this hill, you're more than likely going to roll into the water. And um, that's really what this hole is known for, is just big numbers there's for uh, it being such a simple hole. It almost feels like there's like a magical like gravitational pull that takes your disc to that right side. I mean, it seems uh, maybe it's the fact that there's always a headwind on this hole and then the slope does mess up with the rollaways. But yeah, very difficult hole here. Probably one of the harder ones out here. But Richard and uh, Tommy making it look super easy. And that's sawed off, but it looks safe, so can't really be too mad at it. Yeah, that's well short. He's not going to be running that one. That's just a layup, especially with the lead. And you can see there is a left to right wind here by the look of his shirt. This is risky. That must be a super overstable disc. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that roll. Now curl up. Perfect shot from Cawthorn. And 
like I said, no use in running that. That is way too risky of a putt. I like how Justin knew that disc was going to like pop up, so he played it a little bit short. Yeah. Really smart play there. Tommy hitting his birdie. Moving to three under par, tying things up with Justin. Making things exciting. And this is a scary putt. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit too low. We'll be tapping in the par. Take this time. Don't want to chain out on a five footer when you got the lead. Yeah, and that happens uh, way too often. It, it does. <laughs> All right, we are on a hole 12, par 30, 382 feet. Um, this is a pretty similar hole to the last one, just a little bit longer. Um, I want to say that uh, the 382 is actually for the short pin because uh, this this pin back here is. I mean, I'd put it, I'd put it around 400. It definitely honestly. feels I like mean, around four. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, even if the number's correct, it definitely feels more like There's 400. just no like easy line there. You gotta, gotta have a great shot. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's a common play there. What Tommy just did, just a slight flex shot with something more overstable. Um, just try and bite off as much distance as you can. And yeah. if you are a big gunner, the big hyzer is there as well. And that's really on the two only lines I see. I mean, I'll see a forehand occasionally, but if you have the power, you go big forehand or big backhand. If not, then you flex up the middle. Yeah. That's going to get a little bit testy with that OB on the left. He oh, stays my gosh. in, it looks like. Barely. In about three inches away from wow. disaster. And he's going to have a tricky putt, too. He's going to be facing that downhill. Yeah. Justin just finds that tree. You either got to go right of that tree or left of it. It eats up a lot of discs. Yeah. It, I mean, it's in a perfect spot to make this hole, you know, very difficult, which I prefer. Tap in three for Tommy. There's Justin's second. Well played. Get up shot there as well. I can only assume Cawthorn is running this with really nothing to lose. Oh, yeah. Especially since there's no ratings for this round. Goes a little bit deep. Here's Richard yeah, with a how, scary putt. <laughs> look how terrifying that like looks. That is. <sighs> yeah, and he was telling us that he there's no way he was running that unless the cameras were on him. So yeah. that's the reason he went for that. Right. Cawthorn saving par from there. He will stay at one over par. Justin's three. And we got our other two guys tapping in for par as well. Hole 13, this is a par three. It's 292 feet, real short hole. Um, the walking path does play OB on the left side. There is a walking path on the right side and deep of the basket that play OB as well. Um, these guys are either gonna be taking a hyzer around the tree on the right side and uh, trusting that skip up to the basket or throwing a straight putter or mid range. Um, there is also a big forehand spike hyzer line as well. Yeah, most of the danger is just really hitting that tree trunk. Yeah. Um, sometimes if you barely misrelease it, you can just smack it dead on. So yep. you can get past that. You're definitely around the circle. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Brandon going with the dead straight to slight Amy. Yeah, just trusting that turnover, trusting the disc, and he is right there. Gone a little deep, but that is a putt. What do you prefer on this line? Uh, I'd, I'd say what Richard's it's doing like the here. the sweeping hyzer type yeah, thing. Yeah, just, just take a firebird. Don't throw it too hard. Just throw it hard enough to where it gets around the tree on that right side and trust the skip. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, the best play. Looks like that's exactly what Justin's doing. Justin's throwing his a little bit lower. Oh, yeah, he's going to like that. Yeah, that's just fine. About 20 feet out. See if Tommy can hit a big putt here. 
Yeah, it looks like he almost was expecting a little bit more hyzer out of that putter, but it stayed straight and ended up missing right. We got Brandon for birdie. Yeah. Great putt. See if Justin can extend that lead. Or I guess take or the lead. Take the lead, yeah. yeah. Yep. Tommy tied him on the last hole. There you go. Moving to four under par. It's Richard for his two. This will put him right back in the mix. Oh, yeah. Two under par for Richard. Tommy saving par. Staying at three under par. And we are on to hole 14. This one is a par three as well, 293 feet, so just one foot further than our last hole. Um, this hole is really just a pretty standard hyzer. Um, you want to get it out wide enough to where it gets past this tree right here on the left where the drone's, drone's flying. And then uh, as long as it comes back left, you're going to have an inside the circle look. Yeah, I guess you can say that there is a forehand line, but that hill does not really help that out. Um, yeah, I mean, if you catch a skip, you're, yeah. you're going way down there. Yeah, this is probably one of the easier holes out here, actually. It's just a basic oh, yeah. hyzer. Not a whole lot of risk involved. Here's that forehand from Richard. That needs to dig. Uh, it's going to be about circle's edge, maybe a little bit closer. Kind of surprised he took the forehand, actually. Maybe he's just feeling good right now. Yeah, and Justin knew that was not good right out of his hand. Yeah, and that's the most common mistake right there is hitting that tree. Yep. Coming out of the hand a little bit too early. Yeah, when you throw a disc that overstable, you really need to get it a lot wider. Tommy he knew the, that. Yeah, Tommy with a great shot. Here's Justin. Just risk. laying up. Yeah. Richard just a little bit too low. Well, you can't say Richard's not committing to his putts. No, he he's is, not at all. He yeah. is putting no. great effort on his disc. Oh, yeah. It's just a little bit rusty and a little bit off the mark. But Tommy with the birdie, tying things back up with Justin. And Justin tapping in the par. Cawthorn with the easiest two of the bunch. And CTP making his way under par. And uh, just like that, he's in the mix. I mean, you had I mean, these last four holes. Yeah, if you told me that he was at risk of not going under par, I wouldn't have believed you. But right, yeah. Um, hole 15. This is a par three, 315 feet. This is probably one of the trickier holes out here, off the tee. Um, you're just throwing either a mid range or a putter on a turnover line, and you want something a little bit more stable that's going to have a left finish. Um, but you really kind of have to force this one over and uh, trust that that finish of the disc. So disc selection here is crucial and commitment to shot. Yeah, I think you ha you'd have to like play this hole a couple times to really understand what you need to throw and how to throw it. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've never thrown a tee shot like this on any other course. I mean, this is the yeah, only hole where I throw that type of shot. Yeah, this really, it really is a unique hole. I mean, you're almost putting it on an any line and just praying it comes back at the end. Yeah. And there is a forehand route, but the forehand is just you got to hug it so tight with that tree up uh, across the creek where if you smash it, you're at risk of going OB. So it's a very difficult hole. Yeah. But then there's this. If you got the baseball arm like Justin Robertson does, throwing the wow. tomahawk, tombstoning about 20 feet from the basket. That's, that's incredible. Great shot. That's That should be illegal. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> almost cheating. That's not fair at all. <laughs> Get there. Just a little bit left side. Richard for the two. And that is not a miss that you want to have. Justin for the lead once again. Moving to five under par. He's been super solid inside the circle this round. Yeah, yeah, really, he really has. Really no big mistakes. Yep. 
Tommy with the par and Richard with a very, very unfortunate par. He definitely wants that putt back. Well, I mean, whenever you're this that close on this kind of hole. Yeah. Missing those putts feels the worst. Yeah. I mean, you're, it's, 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 it's mentally taxing for the rest of your round. Um, I mean, you really have to focus in on those. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you can benefit from consistently making those as easy as they are. Mm -hmm. but, uh, hole 16, this is a par 3, 333 feet. Um, this one, there is a gap on the right that most of these guys are going to be taking. You're really just wanting to uh, take a fairway or distance driver and uh, throw it with a slight hyzer, let it flip up, and uh, carry all the way to the basket. There is also a forehand line as well. Um, it's definitely more favorable for the forehand players because the line is much wider, or the gap is much wider on that left side. So, And I'm really surprised to not see Cawthorn go with the forehand there. Yeah, I mean, he's he not feeling it. I yeah, guess. Yeah, he hasn't been throwing that great of ones this round, at least to what he's used to be used to do. So, I mean, even that big hyzer play is very difficult. Yeah, but Justin threw that up the middle shot, pretty much spot on. And Tommy's shot is looking, and that's even more spot on. Awesome, putting some pressure on Justin for his yeah, putt. Not surprised with Richard going with the forehand here, and that is turning over. Gets the road skip. Can oh it come back? And it does. Woo. That's going to be a very long putt for two, though. Brandon giving it his best effort. Just not quite coming up with it. Ooh. Richard giving it a run. Here is Justin to keep his lead. Oh, just a little bit too high. At least he missed high. Yeah. Here's Brandon for his par save. Well done. Richard tapping in the par. Kind of surprised with the lone bird here. Right. Tommy with the birdie. The lone bird tying things back up with Justin Robertson. Man, they're just going back and forth yeah. here on these last four holes. Yeah, and we all know 18 is just treacherous, so anything can happen on that yeah, one. Yeah, that is that that hole will make you make or break your entire oh, yeah. round here at McClure Park. Um, this one as well, really. Uh, hole 17. This is a part three, 408 feet. Um, you do have the road that is out of bounds, so if you go for the roller and get it down too soon, you do have a risk of. Uh, uh, having a really long upshot. There's also the road OB left side, which doesn't really come into play unless you're throwing the backhand. Um, most of these guys are going to be throwing a flex shot right down the middle, try and bite off as much distance as they can, and uh, hopefully have a look for the two. Yeah, and they moved this basket about only like 20, 30 feet to the right, but it makes it so much harder to get that two because if you have a big arm, you have to get that angle right on that disc absolutely perfectly oh, yeah. to get it all the way up there for a solid two look yeah before you can you know you can get that fade at the end of the flight and get away with it on this one you can't that looks really high and that's gonna crash into the tree i believe that disc was very understable he threw that with a lot of highs are really high and it still flipped yeah but he's gonna be right there in the middle that's not a bad spot Yeah, I see a lot of people trying to go rollers on this hole, but that is just so risky. Yeah. Cawthorn finding some branches. He's going to be over there next to Justin. They both got looks for two, but mm -hmm. uh, they're about 70 feet. Here comes the roller. Which, I mean, Richard is one of the best roller throwers in Tulsa, hands down. Oh, yeah. Very consistent. And this one's just flipping up too fast on him. Yeah, and that's the mistake you want, though, just getting it on that yeah. right side, crashing into the fence if it needs to. Yeah, super easy upshot from there. Yeah. We'll have a tap in three. Here's Tommy. Get it. Oh, oh man, that looks that so good. Such a good-looking line from Cawthorn. 
I assume Justin's running this. Cool. Yeah, and he played one of those so one of those safe runs where he just kind of gets it up a little bit higher than usual and hope it just kind of falls right in. Yeah. Richard making the par. We got Justin for his par. Tommy saving par, and looks like Cawthorn will be doing the same. And we've got a tie going into the last hole. <laughs> the most Exciting. dangerous hole out there, too. Oh, yeah. Um, hole 18, this is a par 4, the only listed par 4 at McClure Park. It is 611 feet. Um, this is playing as a big island, so if you don't make it across the road, you will have to play from the drop zone. Um, as you can see, the road on the left side plays OB as well. Um, you're really just trying to bite off as much distance as you can, get across the road, and set yourself up for your second shot here um, because the second shot here is a lot more difficult than the first shot, I'd say, because there is an absolute drop-off behind the basket. Yeah, and uh, if you overthrow it at all, I mean, you're looking at a 80 to 100-foot putt uphill. And not just that. I mean, there's a sidewalk that comes into play right there, just on the right side where, I mean, I, you see people going OB every day on, that, on this hole. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you got to be very precise and careful with the speed of the disc coming at it. Justin just playing the safe hyzer. That's what I like to do. Yeah, that's that's my preferred play as well. You just throw it out there with something nice and stable. Trust that left finish and uh, try and set yourself up with that left side gap. And that's not looking great. Yeah, he gets across the road barely and... Uh, it's going to have a long look for his second shot, but it's it's very doable from where he's at. I mean, it's it's very open. Um, he's just got to be careful of going long. Richard flipping one out there. That needs to sit down real quick. Yeah, I assume he meant to get that a little bit lower. It sits. It is set, yeah. Cawthorn's second shot. I guess he's going with the Scorpius. Oh, no. Oh. That's going to curl all the way back to where he basically is. <laughs> I mean. Still rolling. And that's a tough angle on that right side, too. That's a very tough angle. He's going to probably I mean, be forced to throw over that OB unless he takes the forehand route. Yeah, or a big uh, Anheuser. I mean, that's the only thing. But wow. Tommy. Beautiful shot. And he actually kind of got saved a little bit by that tree there. Yeah, I it think it was rolled. checking up either way, but it, was, yeah. it definitely helped him out a little bit. Yeah, That's going to put a lot of pressure on Justin to get it close. And Richard, yeah, Richard. tried to play that OB, but unfortunately hits a tree and stays OB. So he'll be taking it way back. Oh, he's going big Annie. Big Annie. Oh, that's, that's so scary. scary. And that is carrying right. Yeah, Man, that's I mean, that's out of bounds. That's a tough break there. A little bit of a misrelease or uh, maybe a wrong disc choice there. Look at this. Uh, that is Justin, that that just far enough to to make you shake a little bit on that yeah. on that putt. <laughs> wow. wow! What a force, or I guess five save. Beautiful wow, putt. that is such a good putt from Cawthorn. Just when it's really not needed at all. Yeah. It didn't really affect anything. No, yeah. That's <laughs> when you make those. I, I mean. know. It's so frustrating. Staring it down. Great putt from Cawthorn. And it's Richard. Yeah, he said he, he was just going to try to run this. He knew he was out of it, but that was actually one of the worst runs I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, did, he, did he say he was oh going to yeah. run it? I'm not kidding. Oh, that wow. is what he said. Okay. Yeah. And Tommy, and Tommy with a super clutch birdie putt. And now Justin has some pressure. Tommy, I mean, he had the easier putt. I mean... The good thing about this putt that Justin is going about to do is he doesn't have to worry about going long because he either makes it for the tie or he misses it for the, for the second place. So. Yeah. 
He can give it as hard of a run as he needs. Oh, playoffs? Ice in the veins. Great putt putt from Justin. Keeping things tied with Tommy. And Richard Wise. Hut. Hutting the ball in there. And we are on to a playoff, ladies and gentlemen. Tommy Agent and Justin Robertson starting on hole one again. Let's see how long they last. That was fun. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. That was Some exciting golf. Yeah. All right, hole two. You've seen it before. This is another just easy hyzer. Uh, throw the hyzer over the creek and uh, give yourself an inside the circle look. Um, I mean, the danger here with the pressure of the playoff is, uh, I guess, just uh, throwing a little bit too right and uh, not getting enough distance. Um, but uh, this this should be another push here. Tommy going super high again. Oh, and that didn't really carry as much as he wanted, and that's going to be a very tough spot being uphill. Yeah, if Justin can put this close, that's going to be a pretty nerve-wracking putt for Tommy. This is looking perfect. Yep. Going back left, and that's yep. pretty much tapping. He has 15 feet. This is Tommy to keep it pushing. Oh, he knew it immediately. Just a little bit right. Yeah, that does make this 10-footer a little It'll bit more be, difficult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I'd, I'd be well, shaking a little bit. Got some <laughs> the sweat glands going in the hands. <laughs> yeah. Just pumping it out. No problem. But, yeah. No problem for Justin. Huge congrats to him for being our 2019-2020 GK Pro Winter Series champion. Um, again, thank you to everyone that came out and played the series. We appreciate every single one of you for coming out. Um, also, we have uh, a new tour lineup in the works. So uh, be, be looking on Facebook and Instagram for our updated tour scheduling for this year. And uh, we've got a lot of good coverage coming out for you guys. So be sure to check that out. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. You can check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll see you guys for the next tournament.